Okay, so now let's validate the things that we've learned about prototypes by trying out a couple of objects in the Firefox console, and then we'll look at what prototypes do. Why are they even there? So let me create a function like I did before, function foo, which is gonna be an empty function, and now foo.prototype should be this prototype object, okay? So if I were to create a new object, var new foo obj, if I were to create a new object using the foo function, now new foo obj is going to contain an underscore underscore proto property, which is going to point to this prototype, which is foo.prototype. In order to validate this, here's one thing I can do. I can set a custom property on foo.prototype and access it from new foo object dot this thing. And since they both point to the same object, I should be able to access them the same way. So let me create something on the prototype object. I'm gonna say foo dot prototype dot, let me create a property called test equals this is a prototype object of foo. Let me make it the because there's only one prototype object. So this is the prototype object of foo and on that prototype object I'm creating a property called test and I'm assigning it to this string. Now if I were to access foo.prototype.test I'm going to get back the string but I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go to the new foo object that was created because of foo and I'm going to do the dot underscore underscore proto dot test and let's see if that works. So I have my new foo object dot underscore underscore proto. Now this is gonna give me the prototype object of foo again. And now here I can do a dot test. And guess what? The same string shows up, which proves that those two objects are the same. So foo dot prototype is equal to new foo object dot underscore underscore proto. All right, they're pointing to the same object. It's the same object reference. Now, now that we've proved what we learned in the previous video, let's look at why the prototype object is even there. And you remember we are talking about a simulation of some kind of a template, some kind of a blueprint for objects. What we wanna do is have a central location where we define the behaviors for a bunch of similar objects. And uh, those objects either have you know, behaviors on their own, or if they don't, they refer to the central place where they look up behaviors. So here's how it works. Let's say I call a property on this new foo object. It's just another object, right? So I could say, say new foo object dot hello. Now, what do you think gets returned here? Now, this new foo object does not have a property called hello. So if I were to access a property called hello, what you're gonna get back is undefined, obviously. But what's happening here, what the JavaScript engine does here is actually not very obvious. When you refer to a property on an object, right? When you refer to any property on any object, then the JavaScript engine does a couple of things. It first looks at that object and sees if it has a property that you're looking for. If it has it, it's gonna give it to you directly, okay? So let's say I have a new foo object dot hello equals test. Now new foo object has a property called hello. If I would access that, I'm going to get back that property. Very simple. However, let's say I remove that thing. Let's say I delete new foo object dot hello. Now if I were to access new foo object, it does not have the hello property. And now if I were to access it, I'm going to get back undefined, but it actually does an extra step. It first checks the object itself and says, hey, do you have a property called hello? And the object says no. Here's an extra step that it does. If the object says no, it goes to the prototype object of that object and then asks the prototype if it has a property with the name hello. So basically what it's doing is it's going to new foo object dot underscore underscore proto property, which is this object, the prototype object. And it then asks the prototype object, hey, prototype object, do you have a property with the name hello? Now, what does the prototype object do? Well, it's gonna say no as well because new foo object dot underscore underscore proto does not have hello, right? It has a property called test. It does not have hello, we haven't created it. But if it did have 
a property called hello, this would have actually returned that value. So think of it as looking up another object to see if the property exists, if it doesn't find it in the core object. Now let's say I said the property new foo object dot underscore underscore proto dot hello. This value is from the prototype. Right, I'm sending the property on the prototype. Now if I were to access the property from the prototype, it's obviously going to get me that value, but here's the surprising part. If I were to access this on the object itself, JavaScript engine is going to first check the object, says it doesn't find it, then it goes to the underscore underscore proto object and says, okay, underscore underscore proto object, do you have hello? And that object says yes, so it's going to get that value. So check this out. Guess what value you got returned? The value that got returned was the value on the prototype. Okay, so this is some kind of a differing of responsibility. The object has it, it gives it. If it doesn't have it, it defers it to the prototype object, which is the underscore underscore proto object. And if that doesn't have it, only then does it say, okay, I don't have it, right? That's what, what happened over here. But now rather than setting that on the object itself, I set it on the proto object and that still worked. Okay, now let's look back at the proto object and it also has a test property, right? So if I were to access new foo object dot test, guess what gets returned? Well, the engine is first gonna check new foo object and say, hey, do you have a property called test? What's the answer gonna be? The answer is gonna be no, because this object does not have a property called test. Once the engine gets the answer no from the object itself, it then goes and checks the underscore underscore proto property, which is the other, the prototype object. It says, hey, prototype object, do you have a property called test? And the prototype object says yes. Now it's going to take that value and it's going to return it. So when I do a new foo object or test, it's going to get back the value even though this object does not have a property called test. All right. So if I were to access this, it is going to get the prototype object's property. However, if I were to add this property on new foo object, guess what happens? The engine is going to find this property on the object itself and it does not even look up the property from the prototype. So new foo object could have a property called test which contains a completely different value. And when I do new foo object dot test, that's the value that gets returned, not the prototypes because the object has it, it doesn't even go look at the prototype. So the way to set this thing is say new foo object dot test equals, let me give a completely different value here like 10. And now new foo object has a property called test and the new foo object dot underscore underscore proto property has a value called this uh, is the prototype object, it's a string. If I were to access this, what I get back is the object's value, it's not gonna look up the prototype. If I access this, I get 10 back, All right? If I were to delete this from the object, and now I access it, what am I gonna get back? The prototype's value, all right? So this is the kind of lookup that happens with prototypes, and it is kind of implicit in the property lookup that you are familiar with with JavaScript. JavaScript engine is actually looking up multiple locations if the property does not exist in the core object that you're looking up from. It's just that we don't realize it because it's so transparent. Now, if you get something like this, we access something like this and you get back a value, it's really hard to tell if it's on the object itself or it's from the prototype. The only way to figure that out is by actually examining this object and saying, hey, do you have a property or is it looking up from the prototype? Okay, so this is this is fancy, but why do we need this? What is the point of having this kind of a lookup? We'll examine that in the next video.